Hello everyone, this video is going to go over everything about the Incarnatron Prime that you'll ever need to know. I have some info that I haven't seen on other videos so far. Also, I'll just brush over the basic Smooth Rain builds that you've most likely seen everywhere, because this gun's so good that I swear you could just put on 8 random mods and still shred the steel path. Then I have a couple interesting, somewhat more thought out builds for you, so let's get right into it. You charge up the Incarniform by getting headshots, and then you activate it by using alt fire. And then once it's in Carniform, it will shoot these bouncing balls that explode on impact, and their lifespan seems to be affected by the travel distance and the amount of impacts. The max amount of impacts that I can seem to get is 6, before the ball will explode. Looking at the evolution options when talking to Calvero in the Zaraman, Evolution 2 has two choices. Choice 1, you get additional damage, and you get 25% multi-shot when you proc puncture on an enemy, and this stacks up to four times. Choice 2, you get the same additional damage as the first choice, and when your sprint speed is above 1.2, you get 30% additional direct damage based on the amount of status procs that you have on an enemy. The interesting thing about that is that it doesn't fucking work. I have used Amalgam Serration, Rush, Warframe abilities, and I've tested it on Health, Overguard, and Armor, and nothing ever increases the damage. So if you can get this to work, let me know. Evolution 3, you can get either minus 60% recoil, plus 15 magazine size, or minus 30 zoom. <coughs> Useless, why even make that an option? Evolution 4 is where it gets a little spicy. The first option is the most interesting one in my opinion where you can strip enemy armor by 20% for each puncture proc that you apply to the enemy with this weapon. The second option gives 100% additional headshot damage. This isn't worth picking up really, since this weapon already has a headshot multiplier, so this is only a small increase in damage. The third option is the Power Creep Special, where you get plus 24 base crit chance and plus 0.2 base crit damage, and this applies to the primary fire and then also the incarnate form. So for our everyday basic bitch steel path builds, on Evolution 2 we'll be picking up the multi-shot. On Evolution 3, it's honestly your preference, but I'm going to be picking up the minus recoil. On Evolution 4, we'll be picking up the power creep special because damage, and we aren't going to be scoring many puncture procs since we'll be putting on other elements onto the weapon. So this is your viral hunter munitions build, using the incarnate form to go against armored enemies. I'm not really interested in the primary fire because it's kind of boring, but you should definitely try it out because it is unbelievably strong since, you know, given a gun a trillion crit chance, crit damage, and base damage with no drawbacks is obviously busted. So on this weapon, obviously use a maxed out Bane mod, I just don't have the polarity for it right now. Prime Firestorm to me feels really good on this weapon, even though it's only increasing the radius by 1.76 meters. If you disagree though, throw on Fire Raid or something, cause I just don't feel the need to spam fire this weapon on base field path since it's already AoE. To make this weapon even stronger, go ahead and Helmet on Nourish onto your Warframe, so then we can replace our Viral Mods with Galvanized Scope for that. Oh my god, is that Wed Quit damage? Oh my god, that's so OP! Look how broken this gun is, guys! Also, you can throw on Galvanized Aptitude or Hammer Shot for the additional status chance and the damage increases and Galvanized Aptitude's direct damage increase is actually multiplicative. This thing does not add onto your other damage mods. It becomes its own multiplier on the direct hit of the incarnate form, but it doesn't affect the AoE at all. The Corrosive build slash raw damage build is self-explanatory. You could throw on Galvanized Scope. Wed quit. Hey, let's get the fuck out of here. As I was saying, you could throw on Galvanized Scope if you don't want to use a Bane mod, and if you don't have Hammer Shot, you could use Galvanized Aptitude. Before the more interesting builds, there's some more information that I'd like to share. It is an AoE meme to shoot at the floor, but with this weapon, it's actually truly optimal to do so. If you shoot in front of the enemy's feet, the AoE blast will hit them from the floor, and then the ball will bounce up and hit the enemy and proc another AoE blast. Sometimes the shot can get stuck between their legs and it'll just bounce around and blow up even more. Any kind of grouping that leaves the enemy standing is really powerful with this weapon because the incarnate bouncy ball will get stuck between the enemies and explode multiple times. The different standing grouping effects are Korra's Helmet Ability and Snare, the Operator Arcane Magus Anomaly, or the Zal Arcane Exodia Hunt, and Asian Invasion has a great Zal build for this, and I will leave it down in the pinned comment, and you can check that out. This weapon is a mag player's dream. Zatas performs oddly with this weapon against single targets, because the ball will just float there once it hits the enemy a single time, and then when its lifespan is over, it'll explode and hit the enemy again, but it just takes a while to do that. But if you group up the enemies, Zatas works really well, because the ball will get passed around between the enemies, 
and this makes them all Eskimo brothers, and then they'll die from their now shared Incarnan STD. So on to the interesting builds finally. We'll be switching our Evolution 4 to the Armor Strip on Puncture status procs. The first build is using the Latron as a utility primer. The best single target primary weapon primers can put 6 elements onto an enemy, where the Latron can only put 5, and because of low weighting, it will usually only put 4 sadly, but it will be able to armor strip the enemies while priming them. This is the first primary weapon that can actually armor strip, so this is a new tool for builds that want single target armor strip, in case they can't use the usual tools of Warframe abilities, Shattering Impact Melees, and the Uniru Focus School. Also for the Arcane slot, we can put the new Primary Auxiliarate for 36 energy every 10 seconds. Getting impact procs with this weapon is super easy because on the direct impact of the Incarnate Form, it has a forced impact proc. I think this is a really cool utility weapon, but admittedly it's not a great condition overload primer since it's only getting 4 or 5 status effects on. So you may have to throw on a secondary weapon that's a legit primer with this. The last build I'm going to show you is a complete high actions per minute, aggressive, fun as fuck, Saren Toxic Lash build. Saren and this Incarnate Latron adapter were made for each other. This is because Toxic Lash doesn't actually put a toxin element onto our weapon. It just creates a extra instance of toxic damage when we do damage to an enemy with our weapon. So we don't have to put any elements onto our weapon, and this will give us a really fast AoE armor strip from the puncture procs we'll be applying, and this will make our toxic damage from Toxic Lash even more potent. Also, no Warframe feels better to use the Incarnate weapons with because her first three abilities don't interrupt the Incarnate transformation, which when that happens, it's the most tilting shit ever to me. Okay, I finally charged my Incarnate. Here we go. Oh shit, got Willing Guard. All right, Incarnate form time. Oh no, it's not in it. Okay, now we do it. Oh shit, Turbo Wince, and he attack, activate a Turbo Wince. All right, now Incarnate. God damn it. Okay, Incarnate form now. I should probably use Tornadoes here. All right, Incarnate, here we go. Oh fuck, fuck. Also on the build, we're using Zatas because it's adding on another instance of raw damage to our weapon. So every time we do damage to an enemy, when Zatas and Toxic Lash are active, it's more like we're hitting them three times. So now the weapon's single target damage is really good, and I already showed you the group killing power of Zatas. The Saren build is as much power strength, duration, and energy efficiency as I could min max. Then for the survivability, you're going to be living off of shield gate abuse using her second ability, Molt, with free for spite, Augur secrets, and then one Augur mod on your secondary weapon. And you'll have Rolling Guard, and you can use any Operator School you want, so I suggest Fazarin for the invincibility from Protective Dash. The Latron build is a moderate amount of damage, Piercing Caliber and Hammer Shot from our Puncture procs to strip armor, and Utility with Amalgam Serration's movement speed and Prime Fast Hand's ability to switch to Incarnate Form faster. I use this build for Void Cascade, so I didn't use a Faction mod since I had to kill Thrax and they don't affect them. But if you're going up against a single faction or going up against base deal path, I'd suggest switching out speed trigger for a faction mod for an outrageous boost in damage, and then maybe use arcane acceleration on your warframe for fire rate if you want it, and then perhaps switch out amalgam serration for prime firestorm for better group killing power. For your companion, use a panzer vulpophila with a build like this, and for archon shards, it's very beneficial to put two amber shards set to plus 50% effectiveness of energy orbs. So you don't run out of energy while your Vulpophila is in its sentinel form because it's not able to pick up health orbs to give you energy through your equilibrium mod on your Warframe. So after recording this video, I actually tried to take this build to level cap and I'm back here talking to you about it now. It definitely holds up against Grenier and Corrupted. Eximus took a while to kill, but I did have on a Grenier faction mod instead of Serration for more damage against the Demolist that I was trying to kill. And that does not affect Grenier that turn into Corrupted during the Fisher missions, so maybe the Eximus would be easier to kill if they weren't turning into the wrong faction. Also, my Vulpophila perma died on round 23 somehow, and I was still able to keep up energy while frequently shield gating, like very frequently, until about round 40, where I started relying more on my Vazarin Protective Sling for survivability. I'm gonna call this build a huge success actually, and I had a blast using it. Sadly, the game bugged out on round 45, and it stopped spawning enemies completely, so I didn't technically make it to level cap, but I'm calling it level cap. And, but I don't really have any level cap rounds or demos kills to show you besides the like rough ones that you see in the clips here and there. So thank you so much for watching. This was my first scripted video. I'm done scripting right now. I'm just talking. Let me know how you liked it. I think it turned out a lot better. It's kind of a lot of effort, but also it's a lot less stress since I'm just reading from a script. 
So I hope that this turns out good and people like this so I can keep doing stuff like this. I kind of hit a wall with how I did my videos before. I kind of just like showed off stuff while I talked and that made it hard to explain exactly what I'm trying to explain and it actually made my videos end up longer than I think I want. So if you liked this kind of video, please tell me in the comments or just leave a like. And if this has better likes than other videos, then I'll just have to assume it's good. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below also. And subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I'm probably going to be doing all the incarnate weapons to some degree. I don't really want to make the kind of video that I did for the Strun. It was just a rushed video to get it out as soon as possible. And I saw the kind of people that put out videos similar to that, that just put them out literally instantly when the content drops. And even though I worked harder on the video and feel like my builds were better, which maybe that's just ego. It, their videos got a lot more views. It could just be like thumbnail and shit like that. It's just YouTube, you know? But I don't want to do stuff like that. I don't like my strun video. I'd rather make videos like this that are interesting and have interesting builds. I'm, I like that the incarnate weapons actually have like interesting things like this, like removing the puncture, removing armor from puncture. That's cool. On the strun, we have the, oh, I probably don't have it queued up. But on the Strun, there was the electricity procs give you ammo. It's just not that good, but that's the kind of stuff that I like from these incarnate weapons. I'm fine that they're just putting a ton of crit chance and crit damage on these weapons. Just give people the damage they want to do Steel Path, who cares? But I'm glad they're adding in extra interesting utility things that are actually changing the game and giving us new tools. That's what I wanted from these. I hope this continues. And I'll be happy to keep making build videos like this if that's what happens. So that was kind of a Midwest goodbye. So I'll see you later.